sit back and relax now and enjoy this first reflection entitled, A Word to Humanist. Enjoy. Friends, may I renew the appeal for an hour a day to be spent in prayer by every Jew, Protestant, and Catholic. Catholics should attend Mass daily as part of their holy hour, remembering always that the world is under the chastisement of God. And we must do penance and return to God before we will have peace. And in an effort to break down anti-Semitism and anti-Christianity in this country, we have written a little booklet entitled Friends, which we will send you free for the asking. It is only by loving God that we will ever learn to love one another. There are millions of souls in this great country of ours who have no religion whatsoever. Their attitudes vary from a very earnest yearning for religion to an intense hatred of it. It is quite possible that they all could be reduced to seven distinct categories. Our Lord spoke seven times from the cross. And these are called his seven last words. But those who were on Calvary's hill that afternoon addressed seven words to him, thus revealing the seven different impacts the cross makes on souls. The first of the seven possible attitudes toward the cross is that of humanism. The term humanist is here understood in its modern philosophical sense and embraces all those who want a religion without a cross. The humanists, for example, believe that man is naturally good, that progress is inevitable through science, and that human reason, by its own effort, is able to restore peace to the world. The humanists regard all suggestions about faith and grace and prayer and the supernatural order as impractical and unnecessary. They want an education of self-expression, a God without justice, a morality without religion, a Christ without his cross, a Christianity without sacrifice, and a kingdom of God without redemption. These humanists of our day had their prototypes on Calvary on Good Friday. They were those whom sacred scripture calls the passers-by. A significant term indeed. For it suggests those who never remain long enough with religion to know anything about it. Those who think themselves wise because they have a passing acquaintance with our Lord. It was they who speak the first word to the cross. And they said, Vah, thou that destroyest the temple of God, and in three days dost rebuild it, save thy own self. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. He is no sooner on the cross then they ask him to come down. The world is always saying that. Come down from your belief in divinity. Come down from your teaching in hell. Come down from your belief that what God hath joined together no man can put asunder. Come down from your belief that Christ will preserve the church even to the consummation of the world. Come down from your belief in infallibility. Come down and we will believe. And all the while that mob jeers, there comes from the cross the answer, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They said, If thou be the Son of God, humanists are certain only of humanity, not of divinity. But he spoke of God. Father, they said, come down. 
They judged power by deliverance from pain. He said, forgive. He judged power by deliverance from sin. They boasted of their knowledge and superior wisdom, and he reminded them that all their wisdom was ignorance. They know not what they do. Religion, the humanist insists, must be a religion of love. And who speaks more of brotherhood than humanists? But they want a love without the cross. And the word of our blessed Lord seems to imply that that is impossible. For how shall love forgive without first satisfying justice? Shall love mean to let the sinner go on sinning? Or shall it mean to make the sinner sinless? A religion without a cross. That is the essence of humanism. Now, what we want to do here is not to prove that the humanists are wrong, but we want to try to make them understand the meaning of the cross and how very much it symbolizes the love of God. And so, we speak directly to the humanists. You have humanized God, and thus you have dehumanized man. By denying man can be supernatural, you have not left him even natural. For every man wants to be more than he is. You have tried to make all men brothers, but you have forgotten that men cannot be brothers unless they have a common father. And God cannot be a father unless he has a son to whom we all are patterned as brothers. Swine are content. But you humanists are not content with humanity. For now, like monsters of the deep, man preys on man. In godless hands, man has withered like a rose without roots. You make a republic of kings, but you have no one to crown or anoint them. The tragedy of your humanism is believing that dirty things are clean, that the cruel are kind, and hence there's no need for a cross. Come down, and we will believe. To you, all men are good. There are halos even in hell. And so on Calvary's hill you stand and ask in seeming wisdom for a Christ without a cross while he answers you, forgive. Do you not know that to have a world without a cross is in itself a cross? Do you know a mother worthy of the name would not take the pain of her tender babe as her very own because she loves that babe? Why then should not supreme love in the face of evil seek to take the penalty which sin deserves that the evil might be innocent again. Then why do you say, come down and we will believe? If he came down, in whom would you believe? Why are we at war? If it is not because sin is in some human blood, and only in the shedding of just blood can there be redemption and remission of sin... Why not see, then, that great evils can be conquered only by the shedding of the blood of the God-made man upon the cross? Why, then, do you say, come down and we will believe? For if he came down, where would love be? Greater love than this no man hath, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Do you believe that you who out of love for neighbor can sacrifice yourself, can do that which God cannot do? Truly you know not what you do. Have you humanists ever seen love stand up against brute force and go down simply because it would not cease to love? Love without power is destroyed by evil. But love armed with power will die rather than surrender love. 
and that is our Lord on the cross. God, in becoming man, must suffer too, as man suffers. Else how could love be love if it costs not the lover? Did not your Gaethy say, If I were God, this world of sin would break my heart. Well, that is just what it did to him. It broke his heart. Why then, if your love for man is sometimes met by sneer and scorn, do you say to a Christ whose God love was crucified, come down and we will believe? In what can you believe if love must love without a cross and sacrifice? The cross is eternal. It cannot be dug up. It cannot be taken down. It is the core of creation. It is the root of all of our lesser calvaries, of all the sacrifices of all our soldiers in this war. It is God who gives the cross, and it is the cross that gives us God. You want the cross, but you do not want the crucifix. The cross you can wear as a charm, but the crucifix you cannot. Somehow or other, when you look at it, you feel involved. A statue of Buddha does not stir you. But just put a crucifix on your desk for three days and see what it does to you. Remember the days of the French Revolution when a mob swept into the Tuileries? Through room after room it went, destroying. Then through a closed door and lo and behold, a chapel. Above the tabernacle hung the crucifix. A hush fell upon the enraged mob. And someone cried, hats off. Every head was bowed. Then every knee was bent. Indifference was impossible. Then a humanist took the crucifix down, hung it in an adjoining house, and the wild tide of destruction rolled on. They had taken Christ down from his cross. Now they could proceed. Religion was comfortable. No wonder men want Christ to come down. They want a cross, but not a crucifix. A crucifix perils your soul. You stand unmoved before the Sphinx. But the Christ on his cross, in some way, gets into your heart and into your soul, and you acknowledge your guilt. Suppose that our Lord did come down from the cross as you bad then he would have forced you to have done his will. Where then would be your freedom? One day he will come without his cross, bearing it rather than being born upon it, but that will be to judge and to strike and not to heal as now. For then the day of healing will be past. The human never long remains the humanist. For either beast or angel man becomes, but not just man. If you came from the beast, you cannot leave the beast behind. But if you came from God, then you can leave humanity behind and be a child of God. This is true humanism where man finds his center in his source. Before it is too late, then, my dear humanist, desist your plea. Come down and we will believe. Rather listen to that word he answered you. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Forgiveness is not cheap. If he offered forgiveness to you without a cross, you would not take it. But from a nail-pierced hand, how can you refuse? That cross is the price that God had to pay to buy you from your sins. Without it, there is neither sin nor God. As you rise in the scale of nobility, 
Do you not choose pain and trouble and sacrifice for others rather than comfort and ease? Then why do you not choose him who did just those very things for you? And may you, after having listened to the first word of our Lord from the cross, be captured by his love. And with the poet, let this be your tale. I slipped his fingers. I escaped his feet. I ran and hid. For him I feared to meet. One day I passed him. Fettered on a tree. He turned his head and looked. And beckoned me. Neither by speed nor strength could he prevail. Each hand and foot was pinioned by a nail. He could not run, nor clasp me if he tried. But with his eyes, he bade me reach his side. For pity's sake, thought I, I'll set you free. Nay. Take this cross, said he, and follow me. The yoke is easy, the burden light, not hard nor grievous, if you wear it tight. And so did I follow him who could not move, an uncaught captive. In the hands of love. God love you.